Sydney's an older dog. Um, she lives up in the mountains uh, above Gilroy, and we often like to examine older dogs every year uh, to make sure that they're healthy. We look at their overall body shape, whether they're fat or skinny, what their hair coat looks like, their eyes and their mouth and all their limbs and their left nose. Feel their internal organs, their muscles, and listen to their heart and lungs. Um, Sydney came in because she was very sore on her back yesterday. Um, and, but her physical exam turned out good. I mean, I looked at you know, her gums are nice and pink. And she doesn't have any real tartar in her, on her teeth. Um, I didn't throw any real bad lumps or bumps through her body. So we took some x-rays and uh, we found a, a lump on her spleen. Um, and I'll show you that on the x-ray. Um, we also found, uh, we took some blood work to make sure that her internal organs were okay since so she's an older dog. Uh, and her pain in her back wasn't due to something internal. And her blood work looked good. So in this case, we took the x-ray that we took to look at her spine and internal organs, um, and when mainly concentrating on her spine, showed a lump on her spleen, which we ultrasounded also, and we'll show you what that looks like. So the, the spleen, when we ultrasounded the, the spleen, it uh, looked like it had a tumor in the spleen. And so we want to be pre preventatively remove a spleen that could be um, have a tumor on it that's malignant. Don't you think that's a good idea, Sadie? She wants to go home. She doesn't think any of this is a good idea. When we take x-rays of the, the back and the internal organs to see if we can find things that might be causing the pain for Sadie, um, as we look through we can see the vertebrae and the spaces between the vertebrae. Um, these spaces are the discs that are like jelly donuts between cans. So as the discs wear out and get compressed, they compress on nerves coming from the spinal cord up there. So we focused in on this area but we also look at the heart and the windpipe and the heart and the, all the heart and lungs and all the vessels, the liver, all the intestines, and you can actually see the gas-filled intestine with the walls of the intestine, the kidney area, the stomach's in here, the liver, if I haven't pointed it out. But as we, we um, look at the x-rays, we also can look at other, other x-rays, and this x-ray isn't perfect because the dog's tilted a little bit, but we can see the ribs, and we can see the spine, and the hips, and the, and the balls and socket of the hips. Oh, he's still here, huh? And then, no, he if you look left. over here, oh, here's the stomach, oh, okay. and here's the lining of the stomach. You can see little waves like lightning. And then, right next to the stomach is always the spleen, and the spleen has a bump on it right there. Um, that looked like a tumor, so we used the ultrasound to see what that showed. So Sadie's uh, anesthetized on isofluorine gas. We induced with propofol. We premedicated with some hydromorphone. And uh, I'm going to use the blade and make a cut. And uh, this is the part I get excited about because I always want to know whether what I saw on the... Um, on the x-ray and on the ultrasound is really what she got. What happens is when we when we get to open up a incision um, and see what the what's inside, I kind of get excited. So there's the bladder sticking out. So I'm gonna go in and see if I can find the spleen. So when we this is the spleen and the spleen sits next to the stomach, looks like a tongue. Bloop, bloop. And as you pull it out, here's the tumor. God bless you. Kim sneezed. She's videoing for me. So, you can see that the tumor is on the spleen. The spleen's a big organ, and here's another area that might become a tumor. This is an area that is a mass. It could be a hematoma, or it could be a hemangiosarcoma, which is a bad tumor. But at this stage, it's better to get it off there before it turns into something bad. And we'll send this in for a biopsy. And we'll see if it's either a hematoma, which is a benign tumor of the spleen, or a hemangiosarcoma, which is a, a malignant tumor. And we have to tie off all these vessels 
and then we usually remove the whole spleen because what if this area or other areas are going to develop into tumors? We want to get rid of it. Isn't it a weird organ? I mean, it looks like just a, I don't know what it looks like. It looks like shoe leather, or I mean a, sh a sole of a shoe or a tongue, a purple tongue with a, with a little head growing out of it. But anyway, it's very, it's very interesting and it's soft. If you go to the ocean, there's these sea cucumbers and they look a lot like spleens and they're on the shore. You can lift under a rock like that and here's the sea cucumber and it looks like this. But anyway, I better get busy. I tie off all the little vessels and any little tissues like this is a tissue going from the omentum and it holds the spleen in place and it's got little vessels on it so we end up tying off vessels and and um, that's just the sound effect. That's our heart monitor barking. Not really. That's a dog in the other room. Sometimes we have the surgery door shut, but right now we don't. So yeah, this is the tedious part of the job. I really don't really like this as much as I used to anymore because it's just tie, 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 and it takes a long time. But you know, it's good. They say all work is good, right? As long as you're enjoying it. One, one thing I do enjoy is that I'm going to, hopefully we're going to save this dog's life, because if that tumor, which is right there looking very happy right now, if it had decided to become Mr. Rupture tumor, then it could have bled all over inside the dog's belly, and because spleen is just a blood organ, and it could have bled, and Actually, the dog could have died from a ruptured spleen, so this is saving its life because we spotted it ch checking out a back problem. Isn't that cool? Bad little tumor. And um, I didn't show you all the suturing up because it's the same in all the videos. And you can go back to one of my other videos if you want to find out how does I do subcutaneous stitching or muscular stitching. But I don't think I showed you the stapler, this little staple gun. And you can see we do it because it's easy and it's quick instead of skin sutures. And you, I like to do them where the skin is thick enough and the area is flat. And you try to get, put them about that far apart. Now the subcutaneous stitch underneath is the, really the holding stitch, but this just holds the holds the uh, skin all together. You can see how nice that looks. Isn't that pretty? A little railroad track in the skin like that. I'm gonna wash it off, see them gleam. Um, so. Yeah, that's what staples, that's how quick, it took about 30 seconds to do that and it usually would take about, oh, probably take about 10 minutes, 30 seconds versus 10 minutes. Of course, this is a little more costly now. I've taken my gloves off, I'm not touching anything sterile, they were all done so I can take my gloves off. So uh, this is the staple uh, um, applier and it costs 30, 40 dollars, so it does cost a little bit to put those in there. Where there's where staple where sutures only cost a few dollars for each uh, each packet of sutures. Well, let's hope we'll send the biopsy in on the spleen, and we'll see if it was a benign hematoma, which is just a blood blister, or if that little ball was actually a malignant hemangiosarcoma, which is not so good. And we'll I'll be showing you the the results of the biopsy, and we'll talk about it. So the, what we do is we. We've got the, the tumor, I, sometimes I send the whole spleen, but because we got this one so early, I'm just putting the actual tumor in a jar of formalin, and we're going to send this to the lab. So what we do is we, we turn, put that on real tight, and uh, we put this into a plastic bag with, with the, with the uh, form that says the owner's name, the pet's name, and the tissue we're sending and we ship it uh, to IDEX and uh, they have thousands and thousands of uh, biopsies and blood work and all kinds of stuff they test for us and so what happens is uh, we send it to them and they, they, they send us a report probably in two or three days to let us know whether this is a uh, mangioma, a benign tumor in the spleen or a mangiosarcoma, which is a malignant tumor, um, and uh, we'll see what see what we're hoping for the mangioma, which is just a blood, it's kind of a blood blister or a uh, benign 
cyst of the, of the spleen. Um, like I said before though, I'm glad we took it out because it could have ruptured once it got bigger and the dog could have had a big bleeding person. So we'll see what happens. Well, the lab report came back as a splenic hematoma, not neoplasia or hemangiosarcoma, which is the one that can spread to other organs and give the, our patients a real short lifespan. Uh, these hematomas or hemangiosarcomas are usually spleen tumors of larger breed dogs for some reason. You know, isn't that weird? But uh, all the breeds have their own little issues, and the splenic hemangiosarcoma is one that can uh, be present in large breed dogs and often we'll see uh, the uh, dog come in uh, white as a ghost with uh, uh, bleeding in the, lots of bleeding in the abdomen and that can even happen with a hematoma the blood blister that we removed so we're glad we removed it anyway check out dog dish diet um, I think these are my theories again that uh, that these types of uh, tumors, especially the blood filtering organs or the intestines or the liver, can occur because of the some of the chemicals they use in preserving food and uh, some of the additives they put in commercial dog food. That's why I home cook for my dogs and I suggest you get a higher quality kibble, a hypoallergenic kibble, or home cook for your dogs and make sure they get all the oils they need because if you're body is meant to um, run on certain chemicals or certain I mean certain f ingredients and with an absence of chemicals then if your dog's body is always assaulted with allergenic ingredients or chemicals then it irritates the cells enough to turn into neoplasia or cancer so I'm not sure that the cancers we see today are certainly some are due to genetic factors but I also believe that if you feed a really uh, low allergenic load or, or food that isn't irritating and the least amount of chemicals then your dog isn't going to develop cancer as easily so anyway we'll have a great day and I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, we'll be seeing you soon